Our lesson today is entitled The Rainbow, and our lesson comes today from the book of Genesis, chapter 8, verses 23 and 22, or 22 and 23, uh, chapter 9, verses 8 and 8 through 17. And the key verse is, I will never again curse the ground because of man, for the intent of man's heart is wicked from his youth, and I will never again destroy every living thing as I have done. And uh, this rainbow is the picture depicted here. This is Sunday School Lesson, uh, September 3rd, 2017. And my name is Tony Miller. So the, letting, the settings for our text today is God created man and woman and placed them in the garden. Uh, we know that's the study of Adam, Adam and Eve. And he gave them rules. And they were in the garden. And they were told that they are forbidden, forbidden to eat the... Uh, the fruit and when they did God cast them out of the garden and they were uh, fruitful multiplied as God told them and they they filled up the earth their initial offspring was uh, Cain and Abel that we know from studying the Bible and uh, uh, we know about this first murder uh, Cain killed his brother Abel uh, which is the first murder next slide so sin enters the world uh, through this disobedience uh, from Adam and Eve uh, and, and the whole world creation grown at the travail and pain together until now because of the sin that the sin nature of Adam is now in all of his descendants that's all of us uh, again Genesis 3 4 through 13 next slide so there's one Lucifer Satan he corrupts uh, man in this garden this Adam and Eve he corrupts them by getting them to eat this forbidden fruit. But who is this Lucifer? Who's a Lucifer in the Bible? So let's read uh, uh, Ezekiel 28, 11 through 19 and Isaiah 14, uh, 12 through 14. Note, Lucifer is a created being. He is not in charge. God is in charge of all things. Next slide. So this Ezekiel uh, uh, talks about this one a Lucifer, Ezekiel 28, 11 through 19. This is Lucifer. And so thus says the Lord God, you were the signet of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God, and every precious stone was your covering, carmelian and crystallite and moonstone and beryl and onyx and jasper and sapphire and turquoise and emerald and worked in gold were your settings and your engravings and on the day that you were created they were prepared with an anointed cherubim garden I placed you God made this loose for a, a cherubim guardian and you were only you were on the holy mountain of God that's heaven and you walked among the stones of fire that's in the, in the very throne of almighty god where the 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 fire was was stored and you were blameless in all your ways from the days that you were created until iniquity was found in you in the abundance of your trade you were filled with violence and you sin and so i cast you as a profane thing from the mountain of god and the guardian cherub drove you out from among the stones of fire your heart was proud because of your beauty and you corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor and I cast you to the ground and I expose you before kings to feast your eye feast their eyes on you but the multitude of your iniquities by the multitude of your iniquities in the unrighteousness of your trade and you profane your sanctuaries but I which is talking about a future event I brought out fire from within you it corrupt it consumed you and I turn you into ashes on the earth in the sight of all who saw you we're talking about the final judgment that's what we're talking here and you know you among, and all who know you among those peoples are applauded at you appalled at you and you have come to a dreadful end and shall no more 
and shall be no more forever. Next slide. So uh, pride uh, was Lucifer's downfall. Uh, his position was that of protecting the holiness of God. Satan had the highest of all positions, a position which he despised and lost. He, and we have here in Ezekiel, a picture of the highest of God's creature, perfect in wisdom, beautiful beyond description, a musician on top of that. And he was given this high exalted position, but this creation, with all of these wonderful attributes also had a, had a free will like we do as well. And one day God says that this marvelous creature and iniquity was found in you. So God said of him, next slide. So this word iniquity, iniquity is that, that immoral or this gross behavior was found in, in this, in this uh, one Lucifer. That this wickedness, this sin for his immorality, this impropri impropriety was found in this, in this one Lucifer. And Lucifer, God speaks of what Lucifer said to him in his Isaiah 14, 12 through 14. You are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, for you have said in your heart that I will send it to heaven. I mean, he's going to send up, up to God and he, and I will exalt my throne above God's throne. That's what he's saying. And uh, I will also sit on the mountain, going to sit in heaven uh, with, along with God. And I will send above the heights of God. That's what he says. And I will be like the most high. That's what Lucifer said. But God says that yet you shall be brought down to hell. These are the five wills of Lucifer as depicted in the Bible. Next slide. And when Lucifer fell uh, from heaven, one third of the angels fell with him. We find it in, in Hebrews 12, 22 and Revelations 12. Uh, three through nine. Next slide. So, <clears throat> this Adam and Eve uh, disobeyed Almighty God, and uh, God is righteous, and uh, because of that, uh, there is a requirement of blood. So when uh, Adam and Eve sin, God kicked them out of the garden, and uh, and He put on these animal skins on them. And uh, there was blood required. Uh, blood is always the requirement for sin, ours or a substitute. Beginning in the garden and even unto today, that blood is requirement for sin. Next slide. And Almighty God's righteousness <clears throat> requires perfection that He cannot have in His in heaven. Imperfection. He cannot have sin abounding righteousness requires perfection which created beings these angels and, and mankind we cannot meet the bible standard of human righteousness is god's own perfection in every attribute every attitude every behavior and every word that righteousness denotes moral perfection which we cannot achieve next slide so Satan has to die for this action and God promised a redeemer to come. And we find that in Genesis 3 and 15 that this redeemer, this one, he's going to be virgin born and who will ultimately deliver a mortal wound to this obedient uh, being that he will crush his head. And this image to the side is not how it's going to happen. There will be a great battle of Armageddon where Satan will lose and ultimately he will be cast into a lake of fire where he will burn for eternity. Next slide. So God says that there is going to be a redeemer that's going to come and this redeemer is going to be that one who is going to take down Satan. He will be, uh, he will be born of a woman. He will be virgin born and he will come from man he will be the very word of god who becomes flesh but satan has to stop this from happening if he is to be able to be god if indeed he is going to fulfill his five i wills that he said before almighty god he and i let this redeemer be born to save mankind and destroy him 
Thus, he has to do all he can do to prevent Almighty God from sending Jesus into the world to save uh, mankind. His goal is to corrupt God's creation, and that's what Satan does. And we'll see here which causes this flood. Next slide. So God decides to send the flood to destroy all of the living that has been corrupted by the Satan. Uh, man multiplies on the earth along with the sin nature from Adam because God told them to be fruitful and multiply and they did that. But uh, Genesis 6 and uh, 7, and we see it's out of King James Version. And, mo and most of what you're going to find in this text I'm using, I'd amplify it again. But here in, in Genesis 6 and uh, 6 and 7, it says that in the repent, it re, uh, repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping thing and fowls of the air for it repented me that I have made them. God is a little bit ticked about what's going on with a man and Satan and how they have been cohorting together. Next slide. So I, I'm going to interject uh, as I try to do is give you a great setting of this, uh, this text. And I, I have a number of slides following here and we'll go through them quite rapidly. There's parenthetically thrown in to give you some more texture and color to this lesson. And hopefully you understand it as part of this background. So the first one is how many years are there from the sin of Adam to this point, from beginning of Adam to, Adam to now this flood? Next slide. So there's 1656 years uh, from uh, this point, from the beginning of creation of man till now. In 1656 years, man has, has, has sinned so horribly bad that God has to destroy all mankind and all flesh and all creeping things and fowl and all that he has created. Next slide. How many children does tradition say that Adam and Eve have? Because here's the thing. We know about Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel and we have this, this whole thing where folks try to interject with Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, who, you know, how do they continue to go on? Um, you have to look at the totality of scripture in order to get uh, your your answer here. But next slide. So how many children do tradition say they have? Uh, tradition says that there was 33 males and uh, there were 23 females. Thus, tradition says that Adam and Eve had 56 children. Again, they lived a long time. They didn't live just a couple of years here. Recognize this. Next slide. And how old did Adam and live to be? Adam lived to be 930 years old. Genesis 5, 1 through 5. And, and Seth, who is the replacement after Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel and Seth. And in Enoch, we know he walked with God and, and, and God took him and, and uh, he lived 900. People lived a long time in that era. And that's important to this text and is important as so I try to decipher and give you some color and texture to what's happened here. Next slide. How many people are, are on the earth today? Like I said, about 72. Their life expected is 72 years. Next slide. So how old was Methuselah when he died? We know about this man. He was the oldest man to ever lived. 969 years. That's how long he lived. And in actuality, he died in that flood. If he hadn't died in the flood, maybe he'd even lived longer. Next slide. How was Noah when he built the ark? Uh, the Bible says that he was 480 years old uh, when he started the ark and uh, when God called him. Uh, and he was 600 at the time of the flood. So how long did it take him to build the ark? So the Bible is silent on this issue and, and some uh, people want to add and try to uh, figure it all out but what we know for certain that the ark was built between that 120 years between the 480 and 600 uh, between when God called him and when the flood came so uh, that's all we know but <clears throat> 
some things we do can we add some conjecture to because he may have had help i don't think that he could have built that one ark in a uh in himself in 120 years and maybe he could have but there was probably a tremendous cost no doubt there's a lot of uh um there's a, a lot of uh gopher wood and a lot of uh, uh tar and nails and there's a significant amount of engineering that was, was required this is a football field and a half structure and no one ever seen one like this before and i'm sure there's a lot of haters uh it had never rained before and here he is this man building an ark for 120 years or however long he built it for for what evil folks must have said some foul things to him over his lifetime uh, what are you doing you crackpot the rain we never rain but this man was a man who loved almighty god he loved Jehovah, Jehovah God. He loved the creator of everything. Next slide. How many people were on the earth at the time of the ark? So uh, again, there's no way to absolutely know, but but we, we, could, we could make some assumptions and I, I plan to do that to give you again more color to this lesson to recognize how uh, how many people there are probably on the earth at that time. Now I'm ready to calculate an estimate how much the population grew from Adam to Eve uh, in that 1656 years. So I assume that the average lifespan was 900 years, which I showed you before. And a, an average person probably had at least 10, 10 kids. That's five kids and five girls, right? That would just be basic. That all grew up to adulthood and married and there's 18 generations in the family lines and 10 generations generations in an average lifespan and many of these estimates were probably pretty good for the average number of children in a family which i think is probably much higher but these estimates will enable me to calculate on a conservative lower bound for the flood population and that's what i'm hoping to do here next slide so many people on the earth at the time of the ark so if i take uh the formula which i found uh that it gives with people dying and living a long time um, possibly 10 trillion interesting uh right now i can't tell you how many people were on the uh earth uh at the time of the flood but i can guarantee there's a bunch of people and probably as many people on the earth at this time uh, it wasn't just a handful of folks at the time of the ark there were way more than one would assume at this point because of the just pure math so how do we get to noah and who is he and uh, we'll get into that as we enter back in words into chapter six uh, give us some uh, more background on this particular lesson next slide so background for our text, Genesis 6, uh, Noah and the flood, uh, uh, verse 6. And it happened when men began to multiply on the face of the land and daughters were born to them and the sons of fallen angels, uh, sons of God, those fallen angels. What I mentioned to you before, those who fell with that loose for that one third that, that fell, that they saw the daughters of men were beautiful and desire and they took wives of, for themselves. Those angels married humans hmm and they had children and then the lord said my spirit shall not dwell and remain with man forever because he is indeed flesh sinful corrupt and given over to sensual appetites nevertheless his days shall yet be 120 not no longer 900 god is going to stop that next slide again the corruption of mankind uh, Genesis chapter 6 Noah and the flood and there were Naphtalim in the men of stature those are giants uh, notorious men on the earth who's uh, in those days and uh, also afterwards and when the sons of God lived with the daughters and lived and married and and, and uh, uh, with those daughters of men uh, and gave birth to children and these were the mighty men who were of old men of renown great reputation and fame we know about Goliath right as one of those giants interesting in how they went into the daughters of men and, to, and they begat giants in the land next slide and all almighty God is grieved at the created at what he created this mankind and he saw the wickedness 
the depravity of man was great on the earth and that every imagination or intent of of our thoughts of our heart were only evil continually and the Lord regretted that he had made mankind on the earth and he was deeply grieved in his heart so he says I will destroy I will annihilate mankind whom I have created from the surface of the earth not only man but the animals and the crawling things and the birds of air because it deeply grieves me to see mankind sin and I regret that I have made them but this one Noah found favor and grace in the eyes of the Lord next slide so Noah's just a man uh, Noah a just man in the sight of God and that's what he is God always calls regular folks but he called this just man and the only one on the earth at that time him and his family were the only ones who were able to get out of uh, this flood alive and these are the records of the generation of the family of Noah uh, Noah was a righteous man one who was just and had right standing with God blameless in his evil generation Noah walked and he lived in habitual fellowship with God and Noah became the father of three sons Shem, Ham and Japha and we've studied that before and we'll probably do it in the future verse 11 and the population of the earth was corrupt absolutely depraved sexually and morally turpid uh, in God's sight and in the land was filled with violence desecration infringement outrage assault and lust and power and God looked on the earth and he saw how debased the generation was for all the humanity was corrupted there uh, what had corrupted their way on the earth and lost their true direction that Satan did not want this generation to continue to go forward he did not want the Redeemer to come to take a, to, to crush his head so he corrupted all of God's creation next slide so the end of man so God builds uh, tells us uh, one Noah to build an ark and God said to Noah I intend to make the end of all that lives for through men the land is filled with violence and behold I am about to destroy them together with the land and make yourselves an ark of gopher wood and make it rooms and stalls and pens and coops and nests and cages and compartments and coated uh, inside and out with uh, bitumen which is tar uh, with pitch and tar and bitumen uh, this is the way you are to make it and then God tells him the dimensions of the ark that shall be 300 cubits uh, with the 50 cubits in his height and um, there's the dimensions and you shall make a window of light and on and on and he gives him dimensions how to build this ark that's going to take him and his family to safety uh, out of this flood next slide and there is a flood to destroy man in verse 17 and for behold I even I will bring the flood of waters on the earth to destroy all life under the heavens which in which there is breath and the spirit of life and everything that is on the land shall die but I will establish my covenant my solemn promise for my formal agreement with you and you shall come into the ark and you and your three sons and your wife and your sons and wives with you and every living thing found on land and you shall bring two of every kind into the ark and keep them alive with you and they shall be male and female and we know the story of two by two that he led into this ark before the floods came next slide and there is a real this is this flood is a real event that truly happened there was a flood 200 and 72 cultures around the world reference that there was a flood including scientists the earth has proof that there was a flood next slide the earth may have only had uh, one continent at the time of the flood and only one language uh, the um, as we know in studying the flood that the the waters came from beneath 
and came from above with the flood. It was just not a rain that came down. And we know that the land masses were all separated and divided and and, and scientists and, 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 and people of intellect can see how they can put the land masses back together like a puzzle. And they believe that there was probably one land mass. And that's how those billions or trillions or however many people were on the earth at the time of uh, this flood. And they all spoke one language. That's what we know. Because even after the flood, they spoke one language until God uh, confused the languages at that Tower of Babel. Next slide. And underwater lost cities from the flood, China and India and Japan and Cuba. And these are images from cities that are buried beneath the, the ocean waters. Underwater lost cities from China and India and Japan. Again, more images from lost cities that are today found underneath the waters. Images of the ark on the mountains of Ararat. The people have gone up and seen the, the ark on the mountains of Ararat. There's a glacier there, so it's only uh, only uh, available for certain times of the year, but folks have gone inside and, and they've measured it and it has the dimensions as depicted as God told uh, this Noah to build. And they recognize that the when they've taken out samples of the wood that it also was made of this gopher wood. Next slide. So now to our lesson, Genesis 8, uh, chapter 20 uh, through 22. Uh, after the flood and it rained for 40 days and 40 nights as we know this story and when it finally stopped this one Noah built this uh, an altar he they uh, left the the uh, ark after uh, a, a very long time but then, then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took every ceremony clean animal and every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar and the Lord smell the pleas in a room of soothing satisfying scent and the Lord said to himself I will never again curse the ground because of man for the intent this strong inclination and desire of man's heart is wicked from his youth and I will never again destroy every living thing as I have done and that is God's promise to man that is his promise to Noah next slide and uh, Genesis chapter 8 verses 22 uh, after the flood and, and while the earth remains seed time and harvest and cold and heat and winter and summer the day and night shall not cease and the next slide is commentary on this passage here so chapter 8 verses 22 commentary and the flood washed away the race of wicked men but it did not remove the sin from man's nature uh, who being conceived and born in sin thinks devises and loves wickedness from uh, his youth and that as much as since the flood as before but God graciously declared that he would never drown the world again while the earth remains and ma and man upon it there shall be summer and winter and it is plain that this earth is not to remain always it and all the works in it must shortly be burned up and we look for new heavens and a new earth when all these things shall be dissolved but as long as it does remain God's providence will cause of course of times and the seasons will go on and make each other known in his place and on this word we depend and thus that thus it shall be we see God's promises to the creatures made good and may infer that his promises to all believers shall also be good as well. Next slide. The rainbow. Genesis chapter 9, uh, verses 1 through 17. After the flood, Almighty God had to press the reset button. No way was Satan going to win. Satan was not going to stop this redeemer who was going to come. He could pollute the population. He could pollute the animals, which that could be some believe that that's how the dinosaurs, uh, but there he could, he's polluted all of the, uh, uh, the, all that God has created, but no God, uh, Satan will not win. Next slide. So, Almighty God snatched the royal God from under Satan's plan to prevent the Redeemer from coming into the world. That's Genesis 
that one who's going to crush his head and God pressed that reset button with that flood the rainbow Genesis chapter 9 uh, verses 8 through 13 after the flood and <clears throat> then God spake to Noah and his sons with them saying and now behold I'm established my covenant it's a binding agreement a solemn promise with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you the birds and the livestock and the animals of the earth along with you out of everything that comes out of the ark and everything and every living creature of the earth and I will establish my covenant with you and never again shall all flesh be cut off by the water of a flood nor shall and God said this is a token a symbol a memorial of the solemn covenant which I am making between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations I will set my rainbow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of a covenant between me and you it shall never ever be again be a flood to destroy and ruin the earth so God says that he's not going to do it this way again the rainbow Genesis chapter 9 verses 14 and 15 and it shall come about when I bring the clouds over the earth that the rainbow shall be seen in the clouds and I will compassion remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature on uh, and all flesh and never again will the water become a flood to destroy all flesh and that is a beautiful rainbow we see here after the flood next slide so this covenant this God's covenants with man God makes made many covenants with man and, and beginning back uh, beginning with this uh, that uh, he had a covenant with Adam and, and Eve and obviously Noah and Abraham and, and a uh, covenant with Moses and David and um, and he also had a covenant with his people and and also we are under a new covenant so I will I will share a little bit more of that as we move forward uh, uh, with these covenants of God so we get a better understand this whole covenant concept next slide so the rainbow Genesis chapter 9 verses 16 and 17 after the flood and when the rainbow is in the clouds and I will look at it I will solemnly re remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature and all flesh is on the earth and God said to Noah this rain sh roll shall be a sign of the covenant a solemn pledge a binding agreement which I have established between me and all living things on the earth the rainbow so God's covenants with man I think it's important that we kind of maybe at least uh, delve into this just so we get a better understand this whole concept of this covenant the, the covenant with Adam also known as the covenant of works that uh, this is a covenant made between God and Adam where Adam would have everlasting life based upon uh, his obedience to God this apparently was uh, possible since Adam had did not sin he did not have a sin nature but ultimately he did right <coughs> the covenant with Noah this covenant was God's promise to Noah that he would never again destroy the world with a flood and God gave the rainbow of that sign right uh, there's a covenant with Abraham God promised the land and descendants uh, to Abraham right he's gonna make him of the seeds of the sand uh, who was uh, commanded to keep that covenant and was given the circumcision as that sign and then uh, God made a covenant with Moses in giving the law to the nation of Israel was constituted a holy nation and given stipulations how to follow and ensure this to keep this fellowship with Almighty God and that government was ratified uh, by a covenant of sacrifice and sprinkling of the blood with the sacrifices that they did and God made a covenant with David uh, and God gave a promise to David that his descendants should uh, have an everlasting kingdom and be known as his sons and Jesus will be uh, one who will also sit upon that throne of David an everlasting covenant an everlasting throne next slide so God promised a redeemer to come to restore the relationship that was lost with man that the relationship that God had with Adam in the garden where he walked with God and and and, and Adam 
was was had such a great relationship with Almighty God that God allowed him to name all of the the animals and the birds and the uh, and uh, um, and then God said that uh, because of what Satan did and and how he 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 got man to to lose that relationship because of their sin that uh, Genesis three fifteen he says that there is going to be uh, this redeemer is going to come and and it will be virgin uh, he will be virgin born and will ultimately deliver a mortal wound to this disobedient being Satan and his followers and those angels and human followers all of them and there's going to be this new covenant that uh, that is th and this new covenant is that belief in this redeemer who will give those who believe eternal life right the God so loved the world that whosoever believe that shall not perish but have everlasting life that is that grace this new covenant and it's not signified by a rainbow that's signified by the cross and our Redeemer Jesus was on the cross he was the one who came to take away the sins of all mankind and it was love that uh, not nails that kept Jesus on that cross that he uh, loved the Father that he that he loved us that God loved us so much that he sent his only son to be the sin sacrifice for all mankind and because of that we all have a new covenant with almighty God that we have a relationship that we have with with almighty God just like God had with Adam uh, that we could speak and ask in our prayers covered by the very blood of Jesus Christ what blood he shared at the cross that we have access to almighty God through our prayers because of the Holy Spirit that dwells within us because of the blood of Jesus that covers us that we are we are we are not seen to be unrighteous but righteous before Almighty God not covered not sin not sinful in nature even though we still have that sin nature in us that one day we will uh, be changed into a mortality and not mortal as we have right now that causes us to sin profusely next slide so God promised the Redeemer to come to restore the relationship that was lost with man. In the fullness of time, God chose another righteous man through which his Redeemer, which this Redeemer of mankind would come, and that would be Jesus. And this ends our Sunday school lesson. <clears throat> now lessons about this rainbow that God has, uh, has placed in the sky once uh, there is a a storm just like we saw in uh, in Houston uh, and and many people were uh, had uh, horrible events that happened in their lives and flooding and and all and I'm certain that uh, when it was all over there was a rainbow that was that was cast in the sky that one that we can remember that this yeah they were they had this horrible flood but but that's not the way God's going to end it not by any means that God's going to he's got a better plan and a plan to redeem all mankind through our relationship with Almighty God through our relationship with Jesus Christ and my hope for you that you got something out of this study my hope is that it strengthens your faith and my hope is that you share this message and my hope is that you grow your faith through the study of the Bible and my hope is that you continue to study with us each time we present these lessons uh, to you and that you subscribe to this channel <clears throat> and my prayer is that God continues to allow us all an opportunity to share our faith and that is our lesson and I thank you so much for your time